Hi, this is former Congressman Jody Aguardi. I'm the founding chairman of the Albanian American Civic League, the advocacy group that we formed after I left Congress in 1989. The tape that you're about to see is a very important tape. I found it quite by accident looking through my archives. I didn't know that I had it. Uh, the date was May 29th. It's in Jakova. As you can see, we're having a nice Albanian luncheon with Congressman Tom Lantos, his wife Annette. But I wanted to set the stage for this because we had just come from Pristina where we confronted uh, Mr. Milosevic's paramilitary troops and army in front of the Grand Hotel where they stupidly in front of Congressman Lantos started beating up the thousands and thousands of people uh, that were assembled there and they were even using tear gas and, and using rubber bullets. Uh, and I never forget Tom Lantos telling me that he never thought he would see uh, the uh, another Warsaw ghetto in Europe since the one he escaped from as a uh, Hungarian Jew uh, who escaped the Nazis in World War II. But here we are in Jakova having a nice, beautiful, peaceful Albanian dinner and uh, you're listening to some Arbrecht music that was being played in my honor. But here you see Congressman Tom Lantos uh, up and around. As you know, he just passed away in February 2008. But here he is, uh, really spirited, loving the Albanian people. And this young Albanian girl comes in dressed up in the traditional Albanian clothes, and he picks her up and kisses her and dances with her. It was a wonderful, wonderful occasion. We're just about to go to the border of Albania, where we would be met by official cars to take us all the way down through Kukus and Skodra to Tirana, uh, where we had arranged to uh, meet with the then communist dictator, Ramiz Alia, in effect to challenge him to bring democracy to Albania. Don't forget, the Berlin Wall had come down uh, the November before, and yet this is May 1990, and we still had this uh, wall of communism, this wall that prevented people from going in and out of Albania around Albania. So it was important for us to uh, do that as well. And since I was well known at the time and the uh, communist government invited me to come, I told them I would not come unless I brought Congressman Lantos with me. Uh, they were reluctant, but they finally relented. This was important because it was on this trip that uh, Ramiz Alia, uh, gave Congressman Lantos a file three inches thick that had the clippings that the Communist Party had taken for 50 years of the Jews that were rescued, and many of them lived in Europe and other places in the world, looking to connect with the Albanians that rescued them, but the Communist Party prevented that. But here now we get this story for the first time in this file, and Congressman Lantos gave it to me, and I then... Uh, sent it to my friend Eli Streit in Israel to bring to the Holocaust Museum Yad Vashem to see whether or not they knew this and we found out that they did not know there were so many heroes in Albania and today uh, Albanian uh, rescuers are being honored. Previous order of the House, a gentleman from California, Mr. Lantos, is recognized. I would like to say a word about the need for re-establishing after decades of absence, full diplomatic relations between the United States and Albania. As you know, Mr. Speaker, a few weeks ago, I was the first American public official in a half a century to visit Albania. I traveled throughout that small country. I met with its president, who asked me to convey to President Bush the desire of Albania to establish full diplomatic relations with the United States. I have so recommended to the president, and I suspect it has not escaped your attention that a growing number of nations in Western Europe are establishing diplomatic relations with Albania. It is overdue that the United States, which is looked to in Albania as the prime champion of freedom and democracy, 
have its own diplomatic mission in the capital city of Albania. Okay, let me begin by introducing one of our great supporters, and let me say this, it's going to be difficult to say the word great because everyone here is great tonight. And now the United, United States, States of America, America is, is so lucky, lucky to have someone with, with the, the background, background of, of Tom, Tom Lantos. Lantos. And when you get Tom, you get Annette. Let's say hello to Tom Lantos! Tonight, Annette and I are telling you that we are deeply grateful for the privilege of being at this historic evening. And if you'll allow us, tonight we feel like Albanians. Freedom and democracy are sweeping the whole of Eastern and Central Europe, and they will not stop at the borders of Kosovo. The National Human Rights Caucus is uh, very pleased to open this hearing on human rights issues in Yugoslavia. I think it's important for all of us to begin by underscoring the purpose of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, which is a bipartisan activity of the Congress and which has one single objective, and that is to diminish and hopefully eventually to eliminate human rights abuses wherever they occur. Over the last uh, number of years, we have been concerned with human rights conditions on every continent, we have examined human rights violations in uh, countries that have non-democratic regimes and countries that have democratic regimes. And it is our conviction that human rights are indivisible, that the violation of human rights of uh, any group or any individual, for whatever reasons, ethnic, religious, linguistic, cultural, are human rights violations that ought to concern all of us. Mr. Chairman, you personally expressed the link with special eloquence in December of 2002 when you said, and I quote, there will be no jobs without peace and stability in Kosovo but there will be no peace and stability without independence." End quote. I could not agree more. In the 1990s, we found that self-determination for Slovenia and Croatia involved not so much a change of borders as a change in the status of existing borders. The lines on the map remained the same, but their status was upgraded from constituent republic within a federation to an independent nation. This has contributed to the stability and progress of these countries. Mr. Chairman, Kosovo is entitled to precisely the same treatment. 
there must be no double standard. The Talmud says that he who saves one life has saved the world. Tom, you have saved so many lives. You have saved so many worlds. And we thank you for that. And we are so glad that you're here, you're here with us tonight. It is often said correctly that six million Jews perished in the Second World War, but that figure is dwarfed by another and more ominous figure. 55 million human beings lost their lives prematurely during the Second World War for one reason and one reason only, and the name of that reason is appeasement. It has taken the world an awfully long time to learn that Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Milosevic, the Taliban, and Saddam Hussein cannot be appeased. They must be destroyed. So I am filled with gratitude to the Albanian people for saving Jewish men and women and children who lived in Albanian lands. The reward for good deeds is not in my possession, but the respect, the recognition, the gratitude, the appreciation of all who treasure the courage of Albanians will endure forever. And I just say thank you. <laughs>